Holy shit, bro. Whoa. Whoa. Bo, you have been a part of Set the Standard community. You're the goddamn backbone of the whole damn thing. You've completely transformed your life. What? How the hell did you do it? We just started straight in. <laughs> okay. Um, how did I do it? Yeah, how'd you do it? What's the secret? The secret is leaning in, I think. It's, it's honestly uh, how I progressed. It wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't have been any other experience had it been, been not that. Yeah. Mm. What do you think was like the biggest moment for you? Specific, like the story of when you were like, fuck, I'm on here. Yeah. I think um, my, main, my main pivot point was week three, a quick trip to hell. It enabled me to understand that my life had still, like the negative experiences I had in my life were still powerful. Casting a shadow just over here. Yeah. And it, it was um, it was hard to let go of that and it actually took yourself and Glenn to really show that trauma and stuff that I had in my past wouldn't necessarily have as much power if I uh, just let it go. And there was a point distinctly that I remember just uh, letting go. And that, yeah, Glenn said to me, he's like, use your, use your, uh, your wounds um, because they give you wisdom to speak into your future and everyone else that you can interact with. Mm. And you've been helping a lot of people. Like, tell me about some of the ways that things that you've learned, wisdom, stepping into your power, believing in yourself and being completely confident with what you're saying to people, knowing that it's going to impact them. I want to hear about that. Yeah. Because in- how many calls are you having a week with people roughly? Oh, I mean, before I set boundaries, <laughs> in that, uh, I was having about uh, 40. Yeah. Yeah. Roughly with all the guys. And it was it was great, but I had to put boundaries in there to make sure <laughs> that they were restricted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, th- three guys that I've had just an awesome amount of input into, uh, Mitch and Josh. Um, and then I've just been able to, I think, really uh, develop connection, uh, encompassing everything. Um, I'll, I'll just start with Mitch, actually. Like, he's someone that is very limited in his... Um, he limits himself by a lot of beliefs and I've really enjoyed being able to give him advice on how he can just stop being in his head using my experiences of I'm, I'm not, I can't progress unless I let stuff go. And a lot of the time historical stuff is what keeps you where you are. Why drift away from the path? If the path that you're on at the moment, look, it's not necessarily progressing, but it's not harming anyone and it's not harming you and it's just comfy and getting out of that. <laughs> Uh, well, but I think that's what we all like rest like before any idea of personal development comes in, everyone just relaxes in this state of comfiness and it's countercultural to be uncomfortable. Hmm. What was your comfortable? And how the hell did you get out of it? Mm. Like I want to know about the tangible, the feeling, the hard shit, the conversations, whatever it was. Cause I remember uh, even like you coming in the program and everyone, everyone is listening. I'd like to everyone who, who's listening right now to just really soak this in and learn as much as you can from Bo. Uh, because his transformation is pretty wild and it's just been so quick. Like just started as like, oh yeah, one step at a time up the staircase. And now it's like, oh, he's almost at the fucking stop of the top of the staircase. And it's just gone in a blink of an eye. And um, everyone looks up to him now. It's, it's pretty insane. And his energy is pretty unstoppable. So like everyone who's listening to this, take some damn wisdom um, from this because it's actually pretty insane. And I challenge you, Bo, to also step in your power here and speak as much as you can from here. Mm. Boom, step in forward. So, like, we are here. This is it. People are listening. And they're listening about you. And they want to know about you. So, for you, your journey into stepping into power, your comfort zone, what did that look like? Then what did you do to get out? Mm. My day in and day out was just sticking with what I knew how to do. Which was? Which was, so I'm just staying in. Uh, management of people and it was just something I always was good at yeah when you're working in finance in doctor's places Mm -hmm. you weren't happy with how you looked like what was the paint paint me a picture of what it was yeah the comfort zone so ever since back in the day when I started working at KFC (laughs) and then uh, up until now basically I've always been in some form of 
management or leadership role. Mm-hmm. And that's just something I naturally just progressed into. And then I moved job to job. Uh, I developed the passion for making money uh, for people as well um, and just utilised my memory and my OCD to make sure that I could find a way to become valuable wherever I went. And your insomnia of two hours a night. Yeah. I want to hear about the shit. <laughs> yeah. What, pay me more of a picture of this comfort zone. Yeah. So it just, it just meant that I never moved out of it. So I day in and day out would just go to work and work. And, I, and it was good, but I also had this mask on a lot because I'm telling people to upgrade themselves in their work capacity. And that's not something that I was doing in my own life. Um, but yeah, actually it changed, it changed, uh, everything. Um, before I, I, I'd go an hour and a half into work in the morning, just go to work and be there. And then at 5 PM, 6 PM, 7 PM, jump on a train, come back, walk an hour and a half home, get home, eat, uh, go to my room. And I just would lay there and that was all I had. Whether I'd sleep or not is a different thing. <laughs> But I, 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 yeah, I'd stay there until sometimes I, 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 most nights I wouldn't sleep uh, longer than yeah one and a half two hours. Um, How long for? Oh, I've had I've had this ever since I was like twenty years, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, probably about twelve. Um, and it, that in itself, I, I think, broke me a lot and would always make me, I guess, like energy wise and everything. I just didn't ever want to do like more. Um, and sure, like your body gets exhausted. To the point where it just there's times where you just do try and heal yourself somehow or protect yourself and I just burn out and my body's reaction was just getting sick or I'd put on a lot of weight. Um, How heavy were you heaviest? Uh, 130 kilos. Yeah, that's what I got to. It was not something I'm necessarily proud of, but it's my body's way of trying to cope with stress of life and everything that comes on with it and. I had the opportunity to, I guess, move on from that hmm. uh, probably more than once, actually, and didn't take them because I was, I was, I was, I was comfy, uh, not necessarily happy. I wasn't happy, um, but I was comfortable in knowing how to, uh, I knew what to do for my um, day to day and it didn't go through uh it didn't go through progression and it didn't go through like any development i didn't want to because if i changed something that scared me because mm. what if i changed something and what if i did something wrong and if i stayed in my strengths my comfiness i wouldn't have to worry about getting anything wrong um i wouldn't have to worry about letting anyone down letting anyone down uh, wouldn't have to worry about uh, people seeing me in a light that I didn't want them to see me in because I cared too much about what other people thought of me. And so, essentially, I really want to hear about um, some of the things that you've talked about because now yeah, it make, makes sense, man. Like it was crazy when you get in there; and it's like real nerve wracking just being seen for who you are in that time. But since then, man, like I'm getting just if you had insomnia, mm-hmm. you didn't want to be seen, you were overweight. You weren't happy with yourself and you were stuck just doing a job that you weren't satisfied with talking to people that were really bitchy. Like, and you're just like, wow, oh my goodness, I don't like like any of the people here. What the hell is going on? I don't know what forced you to get into personal development or look at anything in the program and what actually flicked the switch over when you're like, you know what, I'm actually going to commit to something. But since then, like, I want to hear about the stories and I want to hear about them with energy. I know right now you're suppressing a lot of energy right now because you want to go, let it out. Like, I want to see your energy, emotions, energy, everything. And I know, like, you quit your job to save yourself more time. You got a new job that you liked. You started crushing it. You saved, I don't know, like 30 people's jobs in the business with one conversation because you decided to stand up. You started educating high-level doctors. And then when you were made redundant, you had every single doctor like ever offer you jobs at everything. And you were like, holy shit, like, no, I don't want any of this because I know my power. You started your own music creative business. You ended up starting like your own financial business business that you've been consulting on and working with me as well. You also started, you've lost like over 20 kilos of weight and you just look healthy. You don't look inflamed at all anymore. And you're like the, literally the backbone of set the standard. Like every single person relies on you and you organize things and you've taken initiative and you're showing up as a fucking leader. Holy shit, bro. Whoa. 
Whoa! Can I get some energy, please? Yeah, man. Yeah, Bob, come on, <laughs> Bo's here now. Like, holy, yeah. I know you're suppressing yourself then, Puff. I'm like, come on, let's get in this. Holy shit, dude. Mm. Whoa. How does it feel? Yeah, it's good. There. Yeah. I want some noise. Can yeah. you give me some noise, please? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's better. No, I, I, Woo! Yeah. Crazy. It's epic. Tell me the stories, bro. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, cool. All right. So from the get go, bro, I was like, there was, there was a moment where- <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could, there's a distinct difference in how I'm talking. Yeah. But there was a moment where I was sitting in the car watching the uh, sun just on the horizon and Michael Kettle called me and I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And he asked me the question and he said, look, I just want to know what you're living for at the moment. And <laughs> I was in- Kettle with a powerful question. Holy. <laughs> yeah, I just- I knew at that time that I wanted something more than what I had and I didn't know what that was, but I lacked purpose in, in who I was and in where I was going. And there was, a, there was a moment where he challenged me and said, look, you, you need to find that and do you think you're going to find that just on your own? And I said, no. And he said, cool. Well, that's something that we can help you with. And he challenged me to uh, just have a look and see what Overcome the Chaos was about and see what you were about. And, and there was a lot of resistance. <laughs> <laughs> there was heaps. I, I sat there and I made every excuse to not uh, – I was like, nah, um, I don't know if I have the time or I don't know if I have – uh, the yeah, the capabilities, the understanding. Money, I don't all things. Money, yeah, but he didn't really let me go. <laughs> <at all. laughs> and uh, and and I turned around and paid like my deposit in. Uh, that moment, I was like, "Cool, well, I've I've at least done this, and I got to commit to it." And then moved through my first few weeks and just. I didn't change anything. I just coasted. I put stuff into uh, our community page and I made sure that I was like, cool, I'm just doing the work. And I show up to the calls, but I wouldn't talk and I just sat there and I wouldn't really contribute really anything. And people tried. It was like milking a dry cow. It was like, <laughs> you know what, there's nothing coming out of him. And, um, and yeah, I... I I didn't really change at all in those first couple of weeks. And then I did week, one, uh, week three and, and I just stepped with a, with a challenge, a healthy challenge of Glenn and you turning around and being like, nah, do this and actually see it and embrace. You had to do it again, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. I did it once and then you were like, nah, take two weeks, do it again. <laughs> and then I did it and then I jumped on like a one-on-one -on -one with Glenn as well. And and it was, it was the challenge to not only just like do it for real, but to see myself in a different light, like some, someone that was actually worthy of, of taking the power that was being robbed of me and making it my own. Um, and so I get to use it however I feel rather than something else controlling my moves and my actions, my thoughts, and restricting my own belief of myself. And from then, I transformed. <laughs> How? Uh, so I, I, first of all, just started showing up. How? Um, I came, made sure I was there every single week for the calls. And I, even if I was late, I still came. And it didn't matter if I had to listen while I was walking and I still made sure that I contributed when people had questions or anything was open to the group I just tried to give some form of advice in my limited knowledge that at that moment I had because I mean I'm still growing myself and so I didn't know like is this going to be is this advice actually going to be worth anything or is it not and and I you were received is what you were. Mm. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, and then I just moved on and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna crush this. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I, I, I don't want, I don't think anyone's gonna kind of hold me back. There were people in the course at that time. I'm not gonna name anyone, but they started a long time before me and, and I'd caught up to them. And I was, I was like, you know, I got momentum and, and no one's going to stop what, what I'm doing. So then I just started like taking the initiative to do what I thought leaders do. And like quit your job. Yeah. I, I realized that I was using too much time for everyone else. And I, my, my time's valuable and I wanted more opportunity to be able to connect one-on-one -on -one with the guys in the course and I wanted to learn from them but I also wanted to understand uh, how, how I can really help them as well because there's, there's stuff that I've been through and there's also there's like a lot of knowledge there that I can impart onto other people. And so at, I was like, yep, sweet, cool. I remember jumping on calls and then just connecting with people in a way that that I I felt fed into and full whilst also being completely empty with um with like advice and giving. instruction and yeah in, in giving in that energy and yeah. and it was it was insane. Mm -hmm. And they're still doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just magnified. Yeah, <laughs> which is mean. Uh, it was it was those it was those like friendships that were formed mm. that are something that is just ridiculously incomparable to any other relationship that I can actually think about personally, physically, like one on one with someone. And I never met these guys before in my life. <laughs> like these, this is like this is over the phone. Yeah, meet a bunch of them today. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> straight we are. And we're going to look good doing it. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was huge. I then just kept that momentum up. So I finished like OTC, it Overcome the Chaos. And that was on the, just before November. And then you called me on the Friday, oh, the Thursday we actually had a one-on-one -on -one call. And I remember talking to you about the fact that nothing in this is found anywhere else. And so why would I want to step away from something that is giving me what I can't find anywhere else? And so I just told you, I was like, you don't even need to tell me about what's next. Like, I'll, I'll, I'm in. <laughs> and, uh, I remember that. Jumped into like modern leaders. Um, Academy after that, and then we made the transition to set the standard. Then I was like, oh, you know what? I, every single person that came in new to the community, I'm like, yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? <laughs> and then uh, people were just asking questions, and and I was thinking, I mean, I, I can answer them. Should I wait for somebody else to answer them? And I'm like, why am I waiting for somebody else to answer them? I'll just do it. And so, yeah, hard out. And that's what I did. So I just started jumping on calls with people and being like, yeah, this is what happens here. This is what happens here. And then one random day, you come along and say, hey, we got this thing starting up called Community Leaders. And I was like, nah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no first, yes after. Yeah. Um, but I, I just seen how things had changed. I'd, I'd seen guys uh, ready to throw in not only the, not only the jobs, but like relationships and community and their lives, and you just take every opportunity to impart something, and you don't even know if you're changing it, but because of the relationship that's formed, people trust you, and they make decisions based upon the advice that you give. I think you do know that they're changing it when they're showing up. Yeah. Like if you know for a period of time, like with some of the guys in the group, it was just some of the things that are happening. How they've just gone from, I won't put any names, but 
<laughs> M Grub. <laughs> Like this on the call, right? Hoodies on, like can't even feel like, oh yeah, full of filled, full of potential, but just scared of being judged from others. Yeah. Until like slowly moving down to like, oh yeah, I've just won a, like a bloody uh, like Spartan racing, come first, crushed everyone. Uh, business is going well, my relationships thriving. Um, it's been four months. <laughs> 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 it's been four months probably. <laughs> We're like, what the hell? I think you also like really get off on the high of seeing other people get onto the momentum. Mm. And then loving watching momentum fly. Oh. Like it's so cool just being in that position. And it was like when you're just around momentum. Like how can you not fly when you're around other people who are consistently mm. jumping off the cliff and then crawling up and trying again? Yeah. Like and just nonstop. Well, I guess I'm going to go again. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go again. Yeah. No matter how many times your face hits the floor. I just love that my face has hit the floor so many times that other people's don't need to. Mm. And it's just, but you know, using that same thing, when you see someone take the step off the cliff and they start flying straight away. Feel it. Open up. That's huge. Like who are you thinking about right now? Uh, I, I think about, uh, so there's, there's Mitch, um, both of them, and uh, and Josh. There's people who I don't uh, necessarily click, connect with as frequently as that, but there's guys like Tim and Michael, uh, Louis. <laughs> I can keep naming. Yeah, well, we'll leave it at that. So yeah, yeah. Um, but they you see them make the conscious shift in stepping out of their comfort zone, just like you did. And you know how tough it is. And you, you understand and you have empathy. And they make that transition. And they, and, and they step into what, what their purpose calls them into. And you can feel nothing but this this inherent pride um, for them and, and love and affection and joy at seeing them succeed. And I reckon it's even better when you're also succeeding. Mm. It's even better to watch people grow and succeed and to help them along like when you're also succeeding. That's the whole ethos of set the standard. It's like you know, high standards for yourself. Yeah. You help other people raise their own standards whatever it be, financially, relationship, health, mindset, emotional intelligence, leadership, and just watching people just take the next level and the next level. And you're also like, yes. And for some reason you're like, oh, I've got a couple levels here, but there's a few that I'm down on and this person's crushing it. Like, let's help each other. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I really think back in the days, I think like hundreds of years ago, when men would band together and work like as a team, sort of like a so soccer team or a football team, AFL team, rugby team, like whatever it is, band together and they achieve huge things. And then for some reason in the real world, from my, my own reality, it's like, well, it's, people aren't banding together that much, especially men. They're not like, oh, let's set a team unless it's like a business where somehow people have moved sort of together. It's like, I don't see it that often. Mm. And it's like, fuck, we're so powerful. Like, like more of us when we're together. Mm. And you want to get around that. You got like, as I met, I was talking this morning, you have your seed. I learned this from Preston Smiles. Thank you for, for telling me the, the teachings of this. Your seed, you're like, your life, your soul is basically a seed and it's got a genetic code in it and you want to plant it in the right foundation. And then um, with the right foundation, it'll grow into the biggest, most beautiful tree. But if you plant it in shit soil, it'll never, or like, ter like bad soil, it's not going to grow to fruition as much as you'd like. So plant it in the right seed with the right people and everyone working together as a team, helping each other through grows. It's crazy. Mm. And it's just, it's so wild to see. And yeah, that's why I just think it is really unique because it's like people just calling you out for your fucking bullshit all the time. Mm. I love those moments. Mm. I really rose the hand the past couple of weeks and just <clears throat> Hulk smashing people in the testicles. And <laughs> boom! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. and, but you can really, you can see the difference that happens when you don't take the opportunity to correct or to offer that if you just let it go then we're not setting the standard of what it should be mm. if 
we are not leading from the front and also the rear, then then A, they've got no one to follow and they've also got nowhere to be pushed. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's huge. Yeah. I love it because it's like you hug someone and then you'll punch them in the face as hard as you can to take that step forward. And then when they take that step forward and if they start to fall back, it's like you're holding their backs. Yeah. I fucking got you, bro. <laughs> like, well, here we go. Boom. <laughs> now I got you. Let's go. Let's and then they turn around. Fuck, scary, like, but let's go. You punch him and then they're like, thanks so much. For <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> thanks for the punch in the face, man. No, no problem, bro. Yeah. I got you. It's all out of love. You want another one? No, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. You want another punch or a cuddle? No, I got another punch actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. no, that's cool. But you also, um, just to get back onto you, man, crazy stories. I want to hear about your story of, I remember when you, you come to the call and you're like, so the gym's an amazing place. Never thought that. Like, what was that experience like? Just real quickly. Oh, huge. Story. Hated the gym. Yeah. So I was, I was hating the gym and, uh, well, I'd not even not hating the gym. I didn't even know it. Like I didn't, I never went hmm. in it at all. Hmm. Um, Someone had taken me to the gym a few times um, last year and he was visiting from England and he took me a couple of times. I uh, enjoyed it with him. He left. So did that ambition. Um, and uh, and then at, at, on a certain week in Overcome the Chaos, um, you jump into like what – is your like energetic capacity and what is like, uh, what, what are you able to do to best help yourself perform? Uh, actually world-class uh, athlete. What does that look like? Yeah, it was, it was awesome to just get a bit of knowledge into what can help, uh, help me in my like energy levels to get myself to, to some form of like betterness regarding my body. And, and I remember sitting on a call and I was like, man, all these guys look great. <laughs> and, and everyone's just jacked. <laughs> like this morning, supermodel heroes or something? It was like, they're like they're a, a blend between a supermodel and a superhero. It's like, <laughs> it's like they got the looks and then they're also just freaking like just jacked as anything. And it's just like, ah. Oh. And like, there's not like a, it's not a, a want to necessarily be someone else. But there's a there's a drive there because of the community that you're in. Yeah, they, they reflect the potential that's within inside you. Yeah. And if you get triggered either negatively or positively, it's like, oh, ah. when the fuck are you going to answer the call that you want that? Yeah. Yeah. I have never met any guy that's like, no, I really want to be skinny. Or no, I want to be overweight. Not yeah. one person. If you say, if you want to look like, a superhero or anyone else, I'm saying 9.9 <laughs> .9 times out of 10, except for the delusional ones. Yeah. <laughs> they go, like, yeah, I want to look great. It's like our girls wear makeup, we get fit. Yeah. We get damn fit. We get damn fit. And it's like, yeah, someone will reflect that potential with inside you. Yeah. And it's up to you to answer the call. And you answer the call. I remember you coming to the call and you were like, um, so guys, I went to the gym this week <laughs> and- why did no one tell me that it was this amazing positive place where there's high fives and everyone's working to improve themselves regardless of how they look? What the hell? Yeah. We're like, yeah, it's great. You're like, it's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> it, it was, it's also this thing that before previously, if I'd ever wanted to lose weight or anything, I would never see results. So then I just give up everything. Mm. And, and it was too hard to get out of my comfort zone. And, but for a long period of time, it's like, it's for everything. This isn't like a three months get fit. It's like, I'm doing this till I die. Yeah. But it's the, it's the embracement of the uncomfortable. Because then again, and while I was already in that, while I was already in that method of cool, whatever someone says, whatever someone asks of me, I'm going to be like, sweet, I'm just going to do it. And then I'm going to see what that looks like at the end. And there was a group of like five boys from Adelaide. that were like, I'm going to go on this eight week, uh, fitness accountability and they put it into the group chat and I was like, ha ha, awesome guys. That'd be great. And they're like, Oh, are you in? And I was like, no. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? 
if it's about losing weight, all of these guys, like I'm, I was, I was the biggest person in set the standard, and I was like, if this is a competition to lose weight. I was like, I got this. <laughs> I was like, I'm winning. I and, damn well got this. Yeah, and I just moved, and I was like, sweet, I'm not stopping. Um, so I just worked out. And how many kilos did you lose? Uh, twenty seven. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's been mean. I've I've started like now working towards actually gaining again, but this is just like muscle, and I'm just going to be getting huge. Mm. Yeah, time to become superhero, supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, need to integrate that. Yeah, but yeah. So, mm. um, but with that came a whole lot of other stuff. Right. Tell us the, um, the stories. Is awesome of how you use the leadership skills that you learned in the program to at your work they're going to fire everyone and then you were like yeah no and then yeah. you changed everyone's mind that was crazy yeah so it's just it was a simple um it was a simple task that you just needed a bit of i guess i needed to step out of my comfort zone yeah. and just approach the topic yeah and paint, so paint i said the picture what, what was happening in the office who was yeah so uh, what happened was we got into a situation where um, people were just going to be losing hours and people are worrying when people lose hours like, okay, what's, what is the actual um, like reality here? Because people are casual workers. So yeah. and you, you can do that. Finances, right? But you're like, we literally have the budget. What? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And so I turn around and I say, I'm like, hey, guys, uh, can you just trust? Can you just come? And and you take people through. And I had this idea that uh, I wanted to show what it is where you can look out from the base level. Like when you're on the road, right? All you see is what's in front of you. You can't see very far. You can see as far as you can. your eyes can take you and that's it. And... I was like, okay, just bear with me here. Walk up to the top. And from the top level, well, it's only a couple of levels higher, but from, from there, even that distinct little part of elevation, you can turn around and see so much more. Like there's a big picture. So didn't you take and, like, the whole team and walk them around the office? Or something? Yeah, like of like leadership. Yeah. And it was it was big because they've also I've I've got to make a point, but then I've also got to back it up with with. I think what I backed it up with was the confidence in myself in knowing that, um, and so you then you then move forward and you're like, cool, all right. When you have when you have a bigger picture, you can see the beginning and you can see the end. If you're content with sticking on the bottom floor, like you, you can only see what's right in front of you and you make decisions based on that. But if you look from the top and you can see actually this is where we're going and this is where we've come from, then we can know maybe we can actually afford to take the risk because that's actually where, we, that's where we're supposed to be. That's where we can go. And that's what that's what's, we're inheriting. And so... Why not risk it now and gain so much by not letting anyone else down? And yeah, and management turn around. You know what? Sure. <laughs> and, and how many people's jobs did you save? Like, was it uh, 20 people or something? Well, yeah, I mean, physically saving. I don't think, I mean, people would have left, definitely, mm. um, but uh, didn't actually like sa saved saved uh, saved thousands and thousands of their dollars that they wouldn't have made, mm. um, and yeah, about there's tw twenty twenty five thirty, yeah, and it's it was humbling to not take credit for it as well. Mm. Um, having the opportunity to 
uh, to let somebody else take credit for that just because they needed some positive reassurance. Yeah. Well, you empowered them. Yeah. Yeah. How has your, like what things have happened in your reality that have just like solidified your self-confidence? You're like, yep. Solidified my self-confidence. And you're like, whoa, shit. Like I know some stuff. I've learned it from either set the standard, talking to people on the phone, like whatever it is, you know, like, oh, having this conversation with someone and I'm blowing their mind. <laughs> and they've had no idea. Yeah, I think it's just. Have you got a story? Uh, I mean, I, I, I can I can think of a few times in which people have. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, let's hear it. <laughs> let's go through. Look, when you when you're leveling up, you're no longer content with what made you content when you weren't leveling up, and so what uh, there is many good things that you have said before um but what brings you pleasure when you're broken will disgust you when you're healed um and uh, Lindsay, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Lindsay, that one thank you yeah. uh and can you just say that again with a bit more energy yeah oh, that was good. yeah what what brings you pleasure when you're broken will disgust you when you're healed. And it's it's so it is so true. It's it's when you learn to step in step with your momentum. What what you were involved in just changes. And you I I've sat in conversation with guys and they've told me that they are wanting to not live to their full potential. But I'd love to hear a story about when you blew someone's mind, not in the community. Okay. Um, so there was an opportunity that I had when I started, um, when I, I returned back to a group of people that I had left. And so there were doctors there um, and we were in a, we we're just having a meal together and I walked in and it was the first time that they had seen me since I left. And I had also, during this time, I had uh, decided to start working, like start working out and start exercising. And I moved in to this space where they all were. And one of them turned around and said, they're like, man, you've changed. <laughs> And it had only been a short amount of time. And yeah, sure, I'd been exercising and working out and stuff, but there was just a different caliber or power that I had and how I held myself. And people asked, what are you doing? Like, how, is, how has this changed so much? And in that time, I was like, oh, I'm just walking more confidently. I'm just moving in my purpose. And he's like, hey, well, what? stop. <laughs> like, what is this? And I was like, yeah. Like when I know what my purpose is, then I'm just going to be moving into it and moving with it. So everything that I do now is directly reflective of that. And we sit down. I, he, we're like, cool, we need to talk. <laughs> and, and so I'm sitting there and we're chatting and he's like, he's talking to me. And he's like, what, what, do you, what do you mean by purpose? And I was like, my purpose is to positively impact and infect every single person that I come into contact with simply by existing. And I say that again one more time for me, please. <laughs> my purpose is to positively impact and infect every single person that I come into contact with simply by existing. Oh, sorry. I just needed to pause you on that because like, do you do that now? Yeah, I do. So you're living and moving with your purpose? Yeah. Day in and day out. How does that feel? Bro? It's great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Sorry. Please continue. You had to sit down with the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And just talk with him. Yeah. I asked him, what's his purpose? And he's like, I uh, help people. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, ah, it's piss poor, man. <laughs> I was like, there's not really anything that, what happens if you can't help people? And I just said, well, let's just dig a bit deeper. Why, like, why do you want to help people? Oh, I want to help people because. 
that's like my ambition as a doctor. I, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to help them. Yeah, cool. But why? <laughs> like, why do you want to be, like, what are you doing? I just kept digging and digging and digging. And I ended up doing basically what we do in the first level of overcome the chaos and help people understand that the reason why they're doing what they're doing is for a much bigger reason than just helping people. The reason why people become, uh, for, for distinctly for this guy, what well, the reason why he became a doctor was to have a life that was so different from what had already been modeled to him. And so he thought, I want to be a doctor so that I can know financially I can provide for my family, for my kids, and just to make sure that they have something just to, in, to inherit and that they'll never want for anything. Bro, do you think that people are like just scared of getting deep in general? Oh, huge. Oh. Why would you, why go deep though? Because being, being going deep is being uncomfortable. Uh, uncomfortable. Why, why would you go deep? Oh, right. It's like, this is like people find it so scary. Deep, connect, not just with themselves, but other people. Mm. It's like I find this, like everyone has this yearning of like deeply connected and coming into power and, and really just owning themselves. But, but that's why it's at the standard. We attract so many people. <laughs> yeah. It's because people see something different and they're like, I don't recognize this. And so they ask questions. Mm. And when they ask questions, we're ready to give answers. Yeah. They're, they're sick of it at the, at the moment. A lot of people. Uh, the la- How good are the last like 10 people that have come in? Oh, my oh God. gosh. <laughs> so many. So good. Just, people walk in and you're just like, hi, oh, hey, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> and you're yeah, like, right. oh, I'll match you. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll <laughs> jump in this level. Go. Yeah. Hard <laughs> out. Yeah, people are like sick of like not getting deep. And then like uh, I literally was on a sales call today and I, I got on old Lukey. Mm. And it was really funny because I just kept asking him, the questions, I was like, dude, like, I was trying to get some negative emotions off him and he couldn't answer. And I was like, but how would that make you feel? And he's like, oh, I don't know, like shit. And I'm like, what emotions? And he's like, oh, like, not good. I'm like, yeah, but, but what emotions, man? He's like, ah. And he said, he's like, well, I just want to feel proud and calm. I'm like, they're positive emotions, man. <laughs> what, what, what is the shit? Like, describe to me the negative emotions. He was like, oh, and I'm like, anxious, depressed, sad, angry, frustrated. Like, what are the, what are the emotions? He's like, yeah, yeah, those, those, those. And I'm like, say them. Say them out loud, Luke. And he was like, yeah, stressed, anxious, and depressed. I'm like, cool, how does it make you feel? And he's like, fuck. I was like, yeah, shit, right? Yeah. That's the first step. He was like, yep. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, but you're walking in this new intensity as well, yeah. which is like, you know, I'm going to make, I'm going to look at them in the eye <laughs> and make them feel feelings, which... This is, this is a good thing because it brings everyone who's actually comfortable with being uncomfortable into a whole different level of uncomfortability. <laughs> <laughs> but it's when you become comfortable in that uncomfortability that you expand your own bandwidth, you expand yeah. your energy, what your body can take emotionally and lean into those situations as, ah, the thing that I'm putting off. And then, you know, when you go to try and do those things and your heart starts going, boom, 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 boom. Well, I've got to do this thing, send this text message or just like, nah, fuck that. I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll wait next week and mm. whatever it is, I'll wait till later. It's like your bandwidth of like, instead of waiting tomorrow morning, you're like, I'm going to do it now. Yeah. Or I'm going to do it in literally one hour. Mm. Like I've got a call or something on, whatever. I'm going to do that in a second. I've been doing it recently. Oh, some of these things are- and it's nothing. It's always stuff that you make up in your own head. Yeah. You know, and for some people, it's quitting the job. For some people, it's telling their partner, like looking them in the eyes and being like, I fucking hate this right now. And mm. watching the other person, like in relationships, dissolve and be like, oh, me too. <laughs> you know what I mean? We both fucking hate this. Let's work on it. Yeah. Instead of like withdrawing all the time. But yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. But you, and, you, and you vibe. I mean, we vibe of people feeling feelings <laughs> yeah. because people don't feel feelings yeah. in the same respect that they should be feeling feelings. Yeah. yeah. And so then when you get someone actually feel feelings for the first time, I think about Lockie and he's like, just sitting there, you're like, now nah, feel it. And then you just see someone with all their exterior walls, just fold and break down. And what a moment you see, oh, it was huge. You see someone finally become real 
And that happens all the time. When you're willing to forego and let go a relationship or a friendship because you'd rather see them grow, that's true friendship. And so you speak with that authority because if you didn't, you're actually robbing them of hearing the truth. And and people need to hear this. Truth will set you free. Yeah. Crazy. The truth in yourself as well. Like we're always putting on so many masks. I'm loving this whole mask thing that I've been talking about a lot recently. Yeah. I just see it everywhere. And I don't even talk to some people, whether it be text or video call, and it's like, oh, I'm talking to the mask. It's like, fuck off mask. Mm. <laughs> like, I want to get to the real you and have you out there making the decisions for you. Yeah. Instead of the mask, we like put them all up, but they're all protection, right? Yeah, you like your body was so big, protect yourself. If I'm big, no one can fucking touch me and fuck with me like unconsciously. Yeah, it's a big thing, and like so self loathing. And yeah, I'm confirming these beliefs that I don't like myself. Mm. Now you're on the whole nother level Mm. of just you're smashing working out, you're crushing fasting, PT, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, but I mean, how can I how can I be able to teach if I'm not like leading by example? Hmm. And so if it, it's 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 false and it doesn't it's not real. If I, I can't, I'm, it's hypocritical if I'm saying to do something and I'm not living it out. Hmm. Oh, God, I agree with you so much. I have a really I have an interesting question. Yeah. I never asked you this one before. No. How do you think being a community leader? like the responsibility of being a community leader in a program has impacted your life to show up as a leader? Like what's the oh practice? Like incredibly. There's, there's a standard that you now, like you don't just in the community have set the standard, have to set the standard, but you need to show and you need to show up because you're, you're asking people, hey, look, make these calls, make these decisions, do this, uh, do this coursework, show up for these calls, and if you're not, then they'll see it because they're coming into a space where they know that this is authority or this is someone that's look up to, and and you have to inherit that responsibility to to then turn around and be like, you know what? It's not just I'm a part of a community called Set the Standard but I have to set the standard so that other people know how to set theirs. And that's why I chat to as many guys as I do. And that's why I'm straight up with them as well. Like with no BS behind the scenes either. It's just, look, this is the reality. This is the expectation. And we expect you to do it because if you don't, you lose. Mm-hmm. And how's that like transferred into your normal life now in terms of like how you feel about yourself, how you show up, your energy, your posture, yeah, things that happen in your life, like asking for money, stuff like that. Yeah. Your own job, like your trust in yourself. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to be good. Yeah. How's that? Like talk to me on that. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, being, being given a letter of termination uh, at work, it was, it was great to receive that. It confirmed the action of actually actually having to leave uh, and, and you get the opportunity to get into something new. And even as a leader, you can still be restricted by what's in front of you. Um, and Especially in corporate, I find. Yeah, but just the routine and the regularity of having a nine to five and a stable paycheck come in all the time, that is something that is that you can just rest and relax in. But... When someone else calls you out and says, you know what, actually, you smash this financial management, you smash this business management, why don't you just do this? Work for yourself, don't work for someone else. And it's great because you see something in people that they don't even see for themselves. doesn't matter how far along the journey they are. Thank you. Um, I'm... I'm proud of that yeah. ability. 
think be proud with, of that. Oh, I fucking am. After like working with a lot of people, like it's been always been there, but like working with people, sometimes you just can see things immediately and they have to you fucking sometimes you just consistently hit the nail on the head or like, I don't know, beating the head of a dog. I don't I can't remember the goddamn saying, <laughs> like whatever it is. It's just like <laughs> flogging a dead horse. That's yeah, the one, that's like it. flogging a dead, dead horse yeah. and eventually turns around, you hit it from one angle and they go, holy shit. Okay, mm. I'm, I'm doing it. It's because you can see something different. Yeah. And then you just got to help that person believe that. Mm. So what we, what, what I do with the boys in the community is exactly what you do with us as well. You see something and you see their potential and see what they're capable of and you inspire and provoke. You provoke a response. Oh, yeah. you got to be a bit of a bully sometimes. And it's even the people who already have awesome potential see mm. themselves are at a level where they think highly of themselves or they've achieved some things that they're like, yep, yeah, this is good. Yeah. And then phew, swear to God, every single time we come in, it's like scratch, 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 scratch. Have a bit of look. Oh, there's the real you, which is way better than who you are now. Let's do that. Yeah. Engage. <laughs> yeah. Engage. Yeah. There's a button. Boom. Yeah. Don't touch <laughs> the big red button. Yeah. 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 Fucking touch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you challenged me to just start consulting as uh, in my financial and business management. Yeah. So how did you, the responsibility of the community leader, help you show up in that? Well, you learn stuff when you're developing yourself and it empowers you to, to learn the leadership skills that you need to be able to lead your life well. Like what? Like discipline and, and self-motivation. Mm. It's, it's the ability to be able to reflect and genuinely reflect on yourself because someone can say, oh yeah, I reflect, I write in my journal or I, um, I meditate on this. And it's like, well, actually, do you, do you actually do that? Because you can, you might be journaling. Oh yeah, I had a good day, but you <laughs> might not be saying that. Okay. Well today, you know what? It was actually real crap. Like overall, it was a good day. Yeah, sure. I'm still alive at the end of it, but there's a difference between being real and wearing a mask. And when you, when you can learn certain abilities to be able to perfect and take that out of a community setting or where you're expected to do that because that's just part of your responsibility and that's what you're called to, you can and take that out of there and you realize that all these abilities are actually transferable into every situation that you can have. It's a moment where you're unstoppable. And you that's have- what happened. You've had those moments. Yeah. What are those? Cool. I was chatting to a person and I'm like, okay, Corey said, you know what? You just need to, you need to charge this. And I'm like, okay, that's a bit of a stretch. And someone's like, well, actually no, because if you're worth this, but you're charging this and everybody else is charging this, they're going to either think there's something wrong with this option and so know your worth know your value and charge that because that's what people aren't going to think oh this is this is a bargain they're going to think why is it so there must be something missing and so i just started doing it i leaned into the uncomfortability of asking people for money and i realized that you know what i am actually worth so much more than this and my hours and my time and my knowledge and what people gain from the 14 years of being in management that I have is people can benefit so much by my brain and what I can do. And so I start charging with the mentality that cool. If someone pays this, it gets increased every single time. And so then it got to 250 bucks a week for a client and then I'm like oh actually that US dollars and for me it's such a it's 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 such an unknown feeling you get anxious you do get scared you're like oh no what are they going to turn around and say no and they turn around and say oh yep sweet cool and you're like okay next person it's 300 mm. and the next person 350 and before long you're telling people, uh, hey, you're sweet. Well, in order to sign me first straight away, it's going to have to be $1,000 straight up as a signing fee and then it's going to be $500 per week after that. And you get so comfortable asking for that because you know that A, you can deliver and B, 
the value of what they're getting, there's actual no money amount that you can really put on it. <laughs> and so you're like, that's what I'm going to do. And yeah, I absolutely love helping people make money. It's one of the best things ever because people have so much like a, a scared response to it. Like, money is like, it's not just money. It's just a relationship to scarcity in general or relationship to abundance, either yeah. or. It doesn't matter if it's time, money, friendships. It's all, they're all different car- currencies in their own way. And when people see the first thing of like, oh my goodness, someone's like putting money into me and holy crap. Like, and sometimes like people can use businesses like wicked i'll create a whole business and a service i say a plumbing business on these things oh cool if it's a plumbing service Mm. i can um like charge lots of money for it Mm. wicked i've got the successful business but what am i actually worth Mm. and never pay themselves a goddamn cent out of the bloody business Mm. like no i'll just put it all in and self-sacrifice themselves i'm like yo you gotta upskill you Mm. you gotta upskill you upskill your lifestyle or like i'm not i don't want to work for a leader who's broke and self-sacrifices themselves for Mm. everything no way I'd much rather work for a leader who can, you know, invest in themselves, who looks nice, who has good clothes, who has like the lifestyle and can make really crystal clear decisions and his brain is just on the point and well rested and well fed and healthy, like the healthiest person. And they're like, I'd, I'd work for someone like that for sure. Yeah. I don't want to work for someone who's not. So when that people have the exact experience of directly putting money like into you mm. and your services, like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Relationship to scarcity just goes switch and you can feel guilty for it. Like Mm. I felt guilty before for making money. Still do sometimes. And other people feel guilty for it. And you're like, you know what? I got to switch this down. It's like, it's not guilty. Like I am taking on responsibility Mm. and then I've got to deliver. Yeah. And then deliver. And when you get comfortable doing it. Yeah. Then you're like, sweet. Yeah. Cool. The relationship is like, just like anything else. Money's everywhere. If you don't, if you can't see it, look, stand yeah. outside and just look around. Yeah. Like literally look around 100%. every single goddamn tree, house, road, gutter, light post, stoby pole, grasses, yeah. mowed shops, sky rises, like, and then all the electrical appliances that go into everything and then all the online stuff like, oh my goodness. Yeah. It's goddamn everywhere. Absolutely. But with someone, people just don't know how much they were. Oh yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah. So many people just come in. And convincing them that they have worth is harder than getting them into the course sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. And it, it, it provides like, you know, it's not just one person. Yeah. Because it is, it's not just one person, especially your friends. If you've got friends around you that are comfortable with, because you can push back. Your friends say, hey, no, you're actually worth this much and you're really good. But like, these are the things you suck at and need to overcome. Yeah, whatever. Because mm. you've told me that like a hundred times. You go into a community where everyone is setting the standard in other areas. They're high performers. They're doing well. Or they've, they are riding the wave of momentum. They finally caught it. Mm. And they all see you for who you are because they've been in your fucking shoes. Mm. And they look you in the goddamn eye and they tell you, not good enough. Mm. Not fucking good enough. Change. Move forward. Stop being so stuck and self-pitying. Yeah. Like, and the way out of that is a fucking cry. Mm. Cry. Let it out. Mm. Don't be weak. Not crying and not showing emotions is so weak. Mm. I'm fucking sick of it. I'm, I'm get angry thinking about it. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, these people, they're not fucking crying. Like, especially men. Like, use it. It's a tool. Mm. And get out there and get what you're worth. Figure yeah. that out. People tell you, you're actually really skillful. And you're just missing a few things. You just haven't aligned some ducks. And when you have that within a community, it's like, it's pretty intense. Yeah. As, as we saw with the, the last hot seat. <laughs> yeah. But even the, even the one before that with Louis. Yeah. He's like, cool. Step, like be real. Yeah. It's, it train that transforms. Yeah. I think you can't even be real without other people though. Like without other morally integral people who are riding the wave of momentum, working on themselves, doing the things, it's hard to literally be real because you don't know. It's mm. sort of like, you know, the king, uh, the, the, the spoiled prince who gets yeah. born into royalty and everyone's just at his feet. Yes, 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 yes. And he's like, I just want to fucking burn everything down. Yeah. I don't even know who I am. Everyone just says yes to me. Would someone fucking say no? And then mm. in all the stories you see, they end up leaving the castle. They meet another kid or someone else. It's just like, shut up. Fuck you. Like, I don't yeah. care. like are you serious? You can't talk to me like that. And then they become best friends. Like yeah. <laughs> happens in every single story ever. Um, and 
Yeah, unless you have people around you, you got to do it, do that. So yeah, well, people wouldn't be able to do it if unless they saw it. Yeah. So it's just an invitation to some people who are who are listening. And if you are interested in setting the standards, this isn't like a plug or anything. But if you genuinely need people to kick your ass, yeah, like we'll do it. Do it. If not, for the love of God, create your own community or yeah. find one. Like, make sure you find yeah. someone so you can you know planting your seed as I said in the right foundation, so you can grow. I've done that recently myself. I don't know, like the past couple of weekends. <laughs> Mm. But we set it. We set the standard. Yep. We we set this. We set the standard the same way as you set the standard for us. Mm. Like if we didn't see you being real, then we wouldn't know what that basis or that measurement was of, oh, yeah. and the measured execution of what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. So, what is one of the most like for you? Just on the, the end, uh, get into the end tail of this is, what are some of the best lessons? that you have learned recently that if you could put into a gift, give to someone else mm. and give it to them right now. Mm. Mm. The one takeaway, my favorite quote ever was the higher we soar, the more out of focus we become to those that cannot fly. And when you are on the journey of self-development, or looking at bettering some part of yourself, what happens is you start to attract a different sort of people. You need to know that if you're on any journey, whatever it is, that the cost of your old self, no, that's wrong. The cost of your new self is the cost of your old self. Yeah. So you need to be willing to let that go completely. Yeah. The price you pay to get to your new self is your old self. Yeah. yeah. And that that's relationships. And that's friendships. That in some instances is a lot deeper than friendships and it becomes family. And it can be jobs. It can be lifestyles. It can be 27 kilos. It can be, it can be anything that is at some point holding you from progressing forward. You know when like Neo comes out in the Matrix and still got all these lines attached to him and he's just been reborn, like he's coming out of this, this state of dreaming into reality and in order to do that, he has to fully disconnect himself. That's what happens. It takes complete sacrifice of anything holding you back in order to propel you forward. And as that happens, yeah, you become... You become different and people will see you differently and then they won't necessarily understand. And so the more you go towards this path of betterment for yourself and making a making a lifestyle that's more in tune and in step with your vision and your purpose, people just don't necessarily understand what that is. And so because they don't understand it, you're soaring at a level that they cannot comprehend. And so you're operating completely out of focus for them. And I just think that that's an incredible place to be in. Mm, well said. And what for you was like the most emotional moment that you've had? The most emotion. Mm, the most emotion feeling. Uh, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. There was there was a time where there's just a whole lot of gratitude, and uh, when I realised uh, who I was, I was realised who I was uh, in a picture and in the celebration of who I was um, now, who who I am now. Uh, in that, I was able to reflect on the person that I was when I first started this journey, and. That to me was super overwhelming uh, because I got to I got to understand completely. Okay, th this is tangible. Like I can see this and I can feel this. Um, but what I tend to do is I keep myself busy so that I don't necessarily have enough time to feel the emotion. And so I I make sure I jump on calls and I I, I fill up all my time so that I don't need to reflect as much until you're in a situation where you're having coffee uh 
in the middle of the Gold Coast. And oh no. <laughs> and someone just says that they see you. And they they know what you do. And they know that uh everything that's gone on and there's just this time where you just learn like acceptance and appreciation in a whole different way and mm -mm. (laughs) it's yeah there was that for me the, the those words and when people um, who actually understand who you are give you like that validation because they can see they can see everything and and I have done yeah I've done some real cool things and I've done some great stuff but. I continuously just give to other people. And so when someone gives back, often I don't get the opportunity to receive it. And so that's what happens. While we're still in the mics, is there anything you want to say? Yeah. My life has changed completely from where I started and there is nothing uh, in the near future that's going to make me stop. And I, 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 I do want to thank you because this is what you've done. But this is not anything that can be stopped. Progression in someone's life isn't measured by one or two people. Like this community that you've got is actually super awesome and it's super integral to the life that I now lead. And if it wasn't for the progression that you've done in your life to get you to this point, then I wouldn't have been able to learn half the stuff to get me to here. So when you turn around and you're saying, nah, feel it, Bo, like... Understand that I see you and understand that you are like, you're so loved. You're the backbone of like STS and you do so much for everybody. Like I see you and feel it. You've done that for me. Like the appreciation post that you wrote about me, I could change everything in that to just say Corey's name instead of mine because you did that. Mitch did that. Glenn did that. It's everything that you've created. <sighs> There's Very correct a, there. We've created. we've created. There's yeah. There's times where I just reflect on on the people that have come through, and I'm just blown away by everything that's happened, and seeing how the people the lives that people lead now because of the effect that self-development has but you can leave self-development development at the door it's the effect that real community has um that in itself is uh is irreplaceable and invaluable and i don't yeah i don't know how often you think about the lives that you've changed all the time yeah I love everyone so much. Yeah. Even if I'm not as much on the front line sometimes. I see. Yeah. I hear. Everyone tells. I'm like, Mm. yes. And whenever push comes to real shove and anyone ever is like, I need fucking some Corey on this. They message me. They somehow find their way to get to me. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's go. You got that to give. Yeah. It's great. I just love everyone so much. Mm. So much. Anyone who is like in that position where they just have big dreams and goals and they feel it in their bones and they know that there's so much more. They're like, there's 
so much more. Mm. And whatever I've created for myself, because we create everything for ourselves, mm. it's prevented me from getting there, but I just can't see it. Yeah. It's like, we'll shine the lights. And I just, all those people in that position, I love them so much. It's so scary when you anything. show them. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love them so much. There's like so much there. And it's like, I'll do fucking anything. I will yell and scream and kick and fight and punch if I have to mm. just to get them to take a step forward. I will love, apologize and bully and embarrass and shame other people just to get there if mm. they have to because I love them. Yeah. Because I'm like, I've been there before. Mm. I know exactly what it's like. If you've been there before, you know what it's like. Yeah. Oh, man, sick of being in that. Like what really got me frustrated was just being a kid and thinking of superheroes and these amazing stories and I grew up to be a singer, dancer and actor and I use similar position and having these dreams and futures happen and then for me at the age of 15 it all just got taken away. Mm. Six, 15, 16, around there. Whew, all of it taken away. And then it was just whew, down to a pile of shit. And I was like, fuck that. Mm. Let's get out of there. If everyone else can, like we can too. Let's go. Mm. So thanks for saying that. But yeah, and I know how much you love everyone. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hear his voice. Just yeah. Like oh, fuck yeah. I love everybody. Yeah, no idea. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. And it's because yeah. people also mm. just don't have an opportunity to experience genuine love sometimes. Yeah. And Especially so, from another man. Yeah. For men, for other men. Like, yes, yeah. we have some good women, but yeah. Mm. And so it's so foreign and you're like, cool. Yep, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like feel it. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I love being able to. See? To do that. Well, I like to challenge everyone who's come onto the podcast to just do one thing, an actional approach. So for anyone who is listening, if you'd like to challenge them to do something mm. today, tomorrow, this week. So everyone, if you're doing it, like write it down, schedule it and do it now. <laughs> but what is that? What would you like to challenge people to do? Yeah. If, if I could talk to you and say and challenge you to do something, it would be to write down that if, you today, if you stopped and didn't continue anything, say uh, you walked out and got hit by a car or something, what would people say about who you were? And if you don't want to add anything to what they're going to say, Cool. Stay where you are. But I always want to be adding onto the legacy that I'm going to leave and find a way to do that. Find a way because because if you're if you're if you're happy with whatever can be written down right now, then you're just you're pulling yourself. Yes, yeah, Nietzsche. What's that? Well, you said then it's Nietzsche. It's a Nietzsche thing. He says he talks about it. If you're walking around a forest and you see the demon sitting on the, on the on a rock, and the demon says to you, "If you had to relive your life for eternity, and think about this fucking exercise seriously, it's like eternity. Would you run off into the forest naked, screaming for joy, or would you collapse knowing that is inevitable hell, especially?" knowing everything that's going to come up and you have to do it again and again and again <laughs> and again. These are two options. Mm. Create a life where you want to scream running into forest naked with joy or collapse and cry and hate yourself. Yeah. Are you Nietzsche, bro? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You just Nietzsche that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Even, yeah. You were, sorry? I didn't even. I, 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 yeah. I've not. He's just been imprinted into your brain. We, talk, we teach a lot of nature in the program. <laughs> Bro, I yeah. just want to say thank you for coming on and um, just reflect again. Like, I see you and thank you. Mm. That's all for me. Thanks, Bro. It's been an absolute pleasure. Share your space. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> to the end. To the end. See you, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs>